30 seconds and counting. running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. There are the homeless, lost and roaming. There are the children. Back to your original statement that you don't <laughs> think I'm too... So far, a week straight in time. Not, not really straight, but a week's worth of time on this topic. Yeah, yeah, Beavis 1 has basically nothing on it. But this is what I, this is my findings. Yeah, yeah, Beavis 1 is a lost video game with an unconfirmed existence. It is most definitely a stupidly mysterious video game that's very hard to track and find without getting too much into theories. Into conspiracy theories and crap. Yeah, yeah, Beavis first appeared in a, now what I believe, I think it's debunked. I don't, I don't know off the top of my head. I looked it up and I'm pretty sure it is debunked or it was absorbed into something. A magazine called Played Again it was first seen in the June 1989, and that's important issue. The 1989 is very important issue of played again and disappeared from the, from that point on until October of the same year. Same, it is the same magazine still, and then it disappeared forever in that magazine until October of the same month. It reappeared in Funko. Now Funko is a different company. And it's toy, um, it's a toy different thing. So just keep that in mind. It appeared in the f in October and disappeared until January of 1990, and then it disappeared from both of them forever. <coughs> there are many theories considered surrounding this. Um, one of them is one of them is that. It was simply just a copyright track. Now there is some evidence to support it, to support this. One of them being that it's totally, and I mean totally, out of alphabetized order. Everything on the, both these lists is very alphabetized, very organized. Except for Yaya yeah, Beepus, which is at the very end, and if anyone if you know the English alphabet, Y does not come, it comes before X, but not that. It, anyways, on the list, it's one above xenophobe, and totally, totally out of place. <coughs> and then, some of them think it's a copyright trap. Well, it's a copyright. Some of them think it's a copyright trap. 
And the evidence to support this is kind of there, but at the same time, if you look deeper, it's not. Um, in both the catalogs, it shows up at the end, except in the Funko, it, ch it has to, the price has been changed, and I'll put that on the screen. Um, I believe it moved a couple, a dollar or two up. So, the reason I think this is fake is because, and I definitely think this is fake, is because both of these companies would have had to seen the game, to sit and see the product itself and see what it is before publishing it. <coughs> I don't think they would have just left it in there. And the copyright trap, I don't think both company. I don't think a company would have stolen it from them because both these companies were pretty big then. So I don't think that's a, a likely theory. And keep in mind that these were both resale magazines, so you would sell your games back to them um, for a profit, like you would sell your iPhone now to Apple, and you would get profit for it. So definitely, I don't think it exists in that form. See, okay, my theory is it exists, but not as we know it. I think it's not in the U.S. I don't think it's a U.S. release. And I think it's not a Japanese game either. But I'll get to that later. The second theory, the second famous theory, is that it is a translation error. Um, this one might have a bit more ground to it than a copyright trap, but I don't think so. Um, because the same problem happens with the the copyright trap as it being seen by many editors at big companies so yeah it was seen in both catalogs in the same year until night and between 1989 and 1990 <coughs> so it is kind of unlikely that both of these would these companies would rip off each other I don't know why I've researched this and there isn't anything I've looked at the copyrights for Japan, like half the world, and there isn't anything under Yaya Bibis, so it, I don't think it was a fully developed game. Now, back to the translation error. Some people think it is Family Trainer, Rai, Rai Krunis, or Super Pitfall 2. I don't think this is it, because that would be, well, one, Super Pitfall 2 sounds nothing like Yaya Bibis, and it wouldn't even translate out to that. In any language. The second thing is, both catalogs were owned, well, were in English, and one of them, I believe, played again, is owned by GameStop. So GameStop might know something about this. I got in contact with them, and they hadn't responded yet. I think that there is a possibility of it being in one of a GameStop warehouse, or I don't know if Funko still around, or Funko warehouse. I think that is a strong possibility, but I don't think it's a United States game, a game that's released in the United States. It could have been, like, accidentally released, like, the company memos could have been mixed up, but even then, I don't think it's true. Even that's possible. I guess it could be, a very low chance. Anyways, my theory is that it's not Japanese. Um, Bebus is Estonian, I, I Google translated this. It's Estonian for baby. I, I know that shocked me too. It's, it's weird. Why would you choose Estonian? Anyways, it's. I, I don't know. I think it's. I think the game's actually from the Czech Republic and was developed for. <coughs> this. I think it was developed for either Nintendo or Sega. It could have been developed for. Or there's a possibility of it being developed for the Philips console. Because that was actually pretty big over there, the Philips CDI. I don't. There's another Philips console, too. Um, altogether, I think the most believable would be. Mine. There is no other theories that aren't like. It was like an alien game. I don't think it's a. I don't think it's a real game. I think it's like an unpublished game, unfinished game. But I don't, I don't know. So, anyways, this wraps up this episode of Lost. Join me next time in a few weeks.